what's up guys and girls, this is JJ here again with the demo of the Vox AC4 TV. If you've seen any of my videos you know that I love Vox amplifiers, I love uh, the natural overdrive that it gives me and that specific uh, Vox overdrive characteristic with the, the chimey top end, uh, the pronounced mid-range and uh, this one is no exception. Uh, this one's been in production for quite some time now, you can get them uh, new for about 270 euros which is really a steal uh, and I got this used for for even less I think I paid about you know 120 euros 120 euros for it um, and I prefer to use the Vox uh, uh, amplifiers uh, using the overdrive of the amplifier itself so not from the pedals uh, especially when you turn them up really loud you get that nice uh, EL84 uh, power tube compression with the mellow highs and very pronounced uh, mid-range, especially with a Telecaster. Uh, so here's a quick um, uh, over overview of the amplifier. It's a f an all-valve 4-watt uh, Class A amplifier. It has a single 12 AX7 in the preamp uh, and an EL84, of course, in the power stage. And this has this is 4 watts. Um, which can get pretty damn loud. Uh, wattage, in my opinion, doesn't really say that much. Um, I've played an AC-15 for a very long time, used it on a, on a number of gigs as well, and that's only 15, you know, tube watts, but it's plenty loud. It can, it can really get you that ear-crushing loudness if you want. Nobody gets to play that loud, especially not on stage when you're mic'd up. Uh, and as we as we all know, uh, we're always asked to turn down, right? So this is four watts, plenty loud, uh, even for rehearsals in in the, in my band in which I play guitar uh, and sing. Um, uh, it's it's uh, loud enough. But uh, then my drummer in that band is not uh, not overly uh, loud and present. Um, he's a very musical player, and I have no problems being heard with this amplifier uh, 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 on top of uh, that drummer and the bass player. Um, so as, as I said, it's 4 watts, it has 3 controls, actually it has 2 controls, a single volume and a tone control and as you can see uh, I, I had those turned up to 12 o'clock and this um, knob is kind of an attenuator, it sets the output level of the amplifier so you can set it to 4 watts, full 4 watts I was turned to uh, 1 watt and uh, you also have a quarter watt setting which is ideal if you live in an apartment like me uh, you can just take it to the quarter watt setting and still drive it pretty hard to get that overdrive so my fellow tenants are very thankful uh, for this little knob over here other than that it has an extension speaker out for a 16 ohm cab so you can run it into a um, uh, a single 12 inch cab or, or, or a 212 uh, to get more bottom end. Uh, inside here is a, a 10 inch speaker, a Celestian VX10 uh, speaker, uh, which sounds uh, fine, but of, of course it's a very small amplifier with a, well let's be honest, a cheaply manufactured cabinet. So it can sound, it can sound a, a little boxy. I can see why a lot of players criticize this amplifier for not having enough low end. Um, that is true, but then I really love that small cranked tube amp sound uh, for the band that I play in, uh, because in my opinion it takes up a little less space uh, musically. It's a very mid-rangey amplifier with not a lot of bottom end, and uh, my bass player um, uh, he has a pretty uh, pretty deep sound, but he uses a lot of fuzz as well, so he takes care of that low end. I don't really mind um, uh, missing that bottom end, especially not recorded, because uh, it's common knowledge these days that small tube amps can get you really great recorded sounds, all right? Even turned up like on the one watt setting with all controls set to 12 o'clock close mics with this Sennheiser E906, uh, record it, it can get you a pretty big sound that sits really well in the mix. Um, there are a couple of downsides to this amplifier, of course, which is the lack of bottom end for lots of uh, musical styles. You cannot play metal on this, all right? You cannot play hard rock on this unless you're running it into, uh, into an extension cabinet. Uh, but it takes uh, pedals really well, of course. 
Uh, another downside of this is that they come with tubes, uh, the stock tubes, they're just junk, basically. I'm sorry for saying that, but Vox amplifiers, they ship with junk tubes. That is why later on in this video, I'm going to retube this amplifier, show you how to do that. It's really easy. It only has two tubes, so I'm going to open it up and show you how that's done. And then I'm going to do a little A-B comparison um, uh, to let you hear uh, the sound, uh, the, 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 the difference in sound between the stock tubes and the, uh, the new tubes that I'm just going to install. I just ordered some electroharmonics uh, tubes which are readily available uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, so nothing special, of course. I know uh, a lot of guys will say, well, you know, you need this and that tube, Mullards or JJ's or whatever. Uh, but basically, um, I learned from Mike Matthews himself back in 2014 that electroharmonics control 70% of the tube market anyway. Most of those tubes are just rebranded, you know. So, really, um, uh, I think electroharmonic uh, tubes are going to sound fine in this amplifier. You could even opt for a speaker upgrade and put in uh, like a, a, a more efficient 10 inch speaker uh, to make it sound uh, even better. But that is the last modification you want to do to an amplifier. I always feel when you're talking about mo modifying guitars or amplifiers or whatever. Um, if you're not happy with a product that you've just purchased in the first place, you know, like walking out of a store with a brand new guitar or an old guitar that you sort of fell in love with, but I'm going to install these pickups or I want uh, the tuners uh, upgraded or, or something like that, in my humble opinion, then you've not made a, a good purchase, right? Same holds good for amplifiers. If you're going to want to upgrade it, even before you've paid for it, uh, what's the point in buying it? Other than just changing the tubes, which is a breeze, as we'll see later on, um, I'm pretty happy with this amplifier. Um, so let me just let you hear some more, uh, some more sounds. As, uh, as I said, I was set to uh, 12 o'clock on both controls. That was the one watt setting. Now I'm just gonna take it to the four watt setting, which is full power on this amplifier. And uh, let me just let you hear the difference. Again, here's the one watt setting with just a simple chord. Let me just go to the four watt setting. cleaning up. Of course, this doesn't have a lot of clean headroom, but that, that's not what I, I look for. I don't look for amplifiers with a lot of clean headroom because I like the amp to overdrive by itself, not using pedals, okay? So uh, just to get a clean sound, here's a 4 watt setting with those same settings on the volume and tone, which is pretty saturated. Let me just turn down on the guitar. short bursts because it's really pretty loud in here uh, but what the heck it's a Saturday morning it's 11 o'clock so I'm just gonna turn it up even more turn the tone control down just a, a little bit let you hear uh, how it sounds when you really push it Turn the tone a little bit down because it gets uh, it gets pretty bright on a Telecaster, right? So that was the four watt setting. Uh, now I'm just going to go um, from the one watt setting to the quarter watt setting, still with all controls set to 12 o'clock. 
one white one white sorry and this is what I'm talking about when you're playing at home in an apartment I'm not touching any of the recording levels I'm just showing you uh, I don't know if you can tell from YouTube compression I'm just showing you what it does volume wise so you have the same kind of overdrive only it's much quieter and the cool thing is you can really crank it let's just turn it all the way up on the quarter watt setting That's really cool. You get that full overdrive sound at a very uh, quiet volume. Um, maybe you can pick this up if I switch to the uh, ambient microphone, so not the close mic. And let me uh, show you that I can actually talk over it. <laughs> So back to the, uh, the close mic uh, uh, setting. Um, that is basically what the Vox AC4 can do for you. Um, it's really dynamic. If I play really softly on the 4 watt setting on the bridge pickup, which is really bright, listen to how it sounds when I go from, you know, like picking in between the pickups and going to, uh, to move my right hand to the back pickup or just move it towards the neck to hear that different in sound that you can always hear acoustically or when you're playing an acoustic guitar it picks that up and that's what Vox amplifiers do right so you get uh, you get kinda like this Time to swap those tubes because I could I could already hear a little bit of tube rattle going on in there, uh, which is not good if you're going to turn it up loud, or especially when you're taking it to the studio to record with your band, or when you're using it in the home studio. It's going to pick that up, but it's a very non-forgiving, uh, honest amplifier. It's very dynamic, and um, I'll just switch cameras and see you, show you how it's done. All right, so I've opened up the AC4, just took out all of the screws, and uh, it, it, the, this is the um, uh, the amplifier itself, so it comes off really easily. Uh, it is just attached to the back plate, uh, and then you, uh, when you uh, put back the back plate, 
and then um, uh, you tighten the screws on the top it's um, it's locked tight right so it's really simple uh, amplifier to open up um, as you can see this is the amplifier here's the circuit board uh, output transformer here's the preamp tube this is the uh, 12AX7 right here is the the power amp tube which is the EL84 uh, this would be the tone knob over here this is the volume knob and uh, over here is the uh, attenuator circuit which takes you from 4 watts um, 1 watt quarter watt this is the uh, power on and off switch right here's uh, the little light um, and over here you go to the uh, to the speaker and um, and of course the extension speaker uh, output so what I'm gonna do first <coughs> is just put on some gloves uh, some standard gloves um, uh, because uh, it's always best to not touch the tubes uh, with your hands, right? So the way these are secured, let's start with the uh, EL84, is this little uh, thing over here which just comes off like that. There you go. And then you just grab it and then nice and slowly but firmly you just take out that tube like that. <clears throat> this comes uh, let me see. This is a soft tech uh, made in Russia uh, tube over here. Uh, don't hear any rattling or, or anything, so I'll just keep it for future use maybe. Um, and then I'll just get my uh, my new EL84, which is an electromonics uh, EL84 over here. which kind of looks the same of course and this can only go in uh, one way right so just take a look at how these pins are situated and then you just pop it in like that and then secure it Okay, that's one. Let's go to the um, preamp tube. Same procedure. Okay. So this is a uh, Ruby uh, Ruby tubes 12A7A, which sounds fine. Uh, so I'll just keep it, put it in those boxes of the electromonics tubes. Let's get my new 12AX7, which is also an electroharmonics. Just take a look at the pins, just like your regular wall wart plug. It's only going to go in one way. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Like that. Like that. Notice these little little thingies on my gloves. Isn't that cute? There you go. Okay, now let's um, put it back together and see how it sounds. All right. Now, in order to put it back together the right way, you have to find a position in which you don't uh, touch any of the components or uh, don't have the amplifier. Um, magnetically stick to the speaker so I just put it uh, like this and then I just put the back plate on like that and then there there are um, different types of screws the, these are seven screws uh, that will uh, attach to the cabinet like that and this is secured by six screws which uh, which look a little different so I'll do those first. Cut the ice pick in his hand, in his hand, in his hand. You will be screaming out his name. Ah, screaming out his name, just as loud as you can. Cure me, Dr. Freeman. Cure me, Dr. Freeman. Just like a little chunk, little chunk, you will die instead of leaving here alive. 
All right, now let's fire it up and see how it sounds. Just for laughs, here's the um, full volume on the 4 watt setting. Brace yourself. <laughs> Definitely hear um, a lot more bottom end, uh, some more volume, 
a little more clean headroom and it's definitely an improvement. Uh, there was no apparent tube rattle anymore uh, after the, uh, the tube change, uh, not even on the 4 watt setting, full volume, it sounded really really clean. More bottom end, uh, which I uh, more bottom end than I had hoped for, actually, and um, especially recorded when I listen back to it, it sounds terrific. So this thing, ladies and gentlemen, is a steal. If you can get one used for a reasonable price, um, I paid, as I said, 120 euros for it, and I invested another 30 euros in the new tubes. Uh, so for uh, 150 euros you have a really great amplifier that shines uh, at home and studio use um, depending on the context in which you're going to use it it's going to be loud enough for rehearsals or small gigs and I'm going to have it mic'd up anyway uh, so this, uh, this cute little bugger is going to get a lot of playtime I can guarantee you that so um, it's definitely a keeper Hope you like the little tutorial as well. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that button and never miss a video again. Signing off. JJ.